I, I guess I guess we'll jump right into it here, uh, and I, I want to start by by Matthew Thomas's comment was best way to make an engine uh, last is to keep up on the PMs and not dog out the engine. Yep, Matthew nails it there with that comment. But there's there's all sorts of things, and I want I want everyone to join in because you guys all have have different methods for keeping your particular engine lasting like guys with Detroit's will know things that they need to do and guys with the Cummins motors will need to know what they do like SoCal Sandman uh, he's not here yet that I've seen but when he jumps in there he'll be able to tell us all the things he's done to keep his motor maintained cats like what I ran completely different setup but I've got all sorts of ideas on how to keep them lasting but probably when I, when I think of the things I did, and I've got over a million miles on my engine now, over a million, one hundred thousand. When I think of some of the practices that I maintained, and I've done this with all my engines, not just this last one, because I treat them all the same, I baby them all. But one thing I did was was regular oil changes, and I I even did them. Some people would consider them early, because the manufacturers would say, "Oh, you could go to." 15,000 or 20,000 miles before oil changes. I always religiously changed my oil at 12,000 miles. Now, something new, relatively new, that's that's in the in the mix now are, are the synthetic oils. So clearly you don't need to do the oil changes as often. And the, the number I keep hearing these days is about 50,000 miles to change synthetic. As I say, I like to, I like to change them early, so I'd probably bump that down a little bit. But something else I'd like to say in regard to oil for making the engine last is my understanding is that the new, uh, the new green diesel fuel that we run now, the low sulfate diesel fuel, uh, isn't doesn't lubricate the engine as well as the old style fuels. So I'm I I'm thinking and. In my mind that part of the bright side of synthetic oil using synthetic oil now will be to uh, help keep that engine lubed up internally because that's that's been lost from the fuel so maybe the synthetic will help help make up for that that's that's my hope anyway that's my theory something else that I always did and and now you see all the manufacturers uh, going that way with their gearing and stuff like that is is to uh, run lower RPM and obviously you know the the fewer revolutions per minute the engine turns the less the slower it's going to wear out because every stroke takes away from the life of the engine so you, if you can lower the number of strokes that the engine takes the engine logically will last longer so I think running low RPMs is a big secret to keep now don't lug them because that hurts them too. Find out the operating range, the, the the peak operating range for your engine. Know it, and run in there. Run in that in that power curve. You know, I th I think the manufacturers. Well, Freightliner doesn't even make its own engines. Really, another division does within that. But um, I, I think I think they they try to stretch out the oil intervals as a selling point to perhaps the big fleets that think oh that's that's even better you know but i don't think i don't think i'd drag it out that far if it were me but i i think they use that as a selling point to to big carriers that's my theory anyway grilled mortal says i i change the diff and tranny oil once a year and there's that's a good practice too that's a good practice as well. You can't, there's no such thing as, as, as changing the stuff too early. You know, you, there's, there's the cost of it involved, but you've kind of got to weigh that with, you know, the life of, the, of what you want the truck to do, the, the life expectancy you're hoping for. The, and different different engine manufacturers will di recommend different things that they want maintenance intervals. 
I guess is what they're after. And I, I, I know uh, for my particular engine, I uh, kept a close eye on the turbo and the oil line to the turbo line. And in, in the space of uh, a million miles, I've, I'm on my th third turbo and I change the, uh, the oil line to it every time I swap the turbo. Um, Cat recommended doing the injectors at, at uh, 800,000 miles. Uh, Jonathan says, GP Transco has those intervals. They say recommended by Freightliner, and they are sample and they sample the oil change every oil change. They are reporting no problems thus far. Interesting. So they're sticking to the seventy or seventy-five thousand or whatever it was. But they do an oil sample every oil change, and there is a good practice right there. There's a key practice. It's it's, it's a little costly, but it's worth it to know. Uh, what's in the oil so oil oil sampling and testing very important procedure in helping protect the engine one of the most stressful parts of any truck driver's day is getting pulled into the way station drivewise helps eliminate that stress with their pre-clear technology it works on all major elds or as an app on your phone drivewise is now offering a 30-day free trial on drivewise pre-clear check them out at drivewise.com. Something else, something else that I always tried to do was um, have my engine maintained by the manufacturer rather than by a truck dealer. Like you know, Kenworth, Kenworth and Pete had trained cat mechanics, but I preferred to take my engine right to a cat dealer because those guys are right up on the latest and greatest things. So I always did that. So if you've got a Cummins. I recommend taking it to Cummins themselves rather than a than a truck dealer. Yes, but what single owner operator could afford that testing so often? It's you know it's it's worth the money, I think. It's not you know you've got to build that into your maintenance costs, and it is tougher for a single owner operator. But uh, I, I still think it's worth doing. Now you know maybe the owner operator a, a single owner operator wants to break that testing up into, you know, doing it every three or four oil changes, for instance. That's up up to whoever's running the financial picture for that truck. But uh, the more often, the better, certainly. Do it as often as you, you can afford to do it if you plan on keeping the truck for a long time. The early cats recommended uh, doing uh, rolling in bearings, doing a bearing roll in every four 500,000 miles, I believe it was. And then the newer ones, they kind of got away from that. But uh, something else I'd like to do is I just used to drive that truck like I was driving Miss Daisy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't flog it. I wouldn't um, over rev it, certainly. You don't, you don't want to over rev your engine because that will certainly hurt it, no matter whose motor it is. There's SoCal. SoCal's here. SoCal, we're talking about how to preserve your engine, and I know you'll know a whole lot about that. Uh, SoCal says... To send in an oil sample analysis costs about uh, $27, which includes a prepaid envelope. So that's that's not expensive at all. That's not bad at all. I think just about everyone, if you, are, if you own your own truck, I certainly think you could afford the 27 to do that. Because I, I think, yeah, and Roger agrees. He's, he says he doesn't think that's out of the way. He thinks that's cheap, and I would agree with that. So a good practice. Send in your oil samples all the time. Something else that you guys will probably have, and Kyle, I bet you Kyle has an opinion on this, but all sorts of guys now like to do engine mods, and they'll go to different companies to bump up the horsepower. And de depending on what you do, uh, there are things you can do to bump up the horsepower that, that cut back the engine life. So you've got to be pretty careful about doing stuff like that and something else you'll need to remember and it was interesting I learned I learned this from cat when I would take my cat in to, to have work done on it or whatever they would plug it into the computer and they could scan it and right away they could tell whether I'd had the engine modified or or done anything at all they could tell by looking at the programming what what had been done to that motor and they told me that if it had been modified in a way not approved by caterpillar 
that would uh, that would void the engine warranty. So I thought that was pretty interesting, and they could tell just by plugging it in. So I, I know while you know it's kind of nice to have the extra horsepower when you need it. There's there's the downside to doing that too, because the engine manufacturers can tell. Tim Fields says I would never mod one of these new engines. They're too fragile with the emissions, and the DPF could plug up easier. Tim, completely agree. Now, some, something else along those lines, too, is, you know, here we are with these new engines, and you're not allowed to modify them. So then, all of a sudden, because of the, the chip shortage, the DEF sensors become unavailable, and the trucks are shutting down. So all along, we've been told that we can't modify these engines or do deletes on these new engines or anything like that until all of a sudden we run out of out of the sensors and uh now now they're advocating that you can you can delete the def sensor need just to get the engine running again after thousands of trucks have been parked over this and and all sorts of owner operators have lost thousands of dollars in work just because they were sitting because they were afraid to try to find a workaround they didn't know how to do a workaround and, and who did but i guess now the dealers are working on a workaround around that missing sensor that is approved by the epa so thanks a lot for all of that there epa yeah tim field says one of the guys at my work his company truck has been in the shop for two months now because the def sensor is on major back order yeah and there's thousands of trucks like that across the country right now waiting for these damn sensors that may show up in another month or may show up in another five months but so now the epa is allowing a workaround of the sensor and the manufacturers are, are and dealerships are are working on it they're working on it they haven't got one yet but they're working on it i tell you news now adirondack says they are making the crap new engines to frustrate everyone so they can sell electric trucks this way the government has a stronger regulation on the fuel source that's an interesting theory and along with that i was reading here this week now that because of the price of electricity during peak times and low times now the trucking companies are trying to calculate when they should plug their trucks in their electric trucks in not when they need charging but when it's cheapest to do the charging so I hadn't thought of that, but all of a sudden that's become a factor with these electric trucks. It's, it's always something. Matthew Conrad, he's out of here. Take care. Take care, Conrad. Drive safe. Something else I'd like to do, and we were talking about this, I believe it was last stream, stream about uh, the engine coolant. And I, I used to change mine every, every other year. And test it every fall, actually, before it got too cold. I'd have it tested. And, uh, and someone else mentioned, and, and that was what I did, too, was to, to swap out the, the filter, the coolant filter, annually. And that was something else that I did that, was, that is a good practice. All these, all these things, I think, contributed to the life of my engine. I never, I never had one blow on me. And there was something else I never did was I never waited till they blew I was always just a bugger for preventive maintenance. And that was what uh, what Matthew Thomas said. Uh, stay safe. Keep the rubber side down. Thanks again for, for joining us today. We'll see you on the back hall. Good night, everybody.